Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, I wanted to talk about pull request checks and how you can make them required for GitHub. Uh, this can be useful to make sure you don't accidentally push to your main branch or you know, make sure that all of the things are green before you merge or other, other stuff like that. Um, I was setting these up recently for pre-commit CI to make sure that I didn't accidentally push over changes that weren't going through a pull request flow. Um, so I wanted to show you how to set that up. Uh, so to show you an example uh, of what happens when we have this set up properly, uh, I'm just going to make a sample pull request to this private repo. Um, don't worry about the actual contents here. It's not a big deal. Oh, there's a token there. Well, I'll rotate that later. Um, it's not a secret token. It just means that you can access this particular image. Is it this URL? This URL. So you can see, oh, you can see the status of my, my badge. It's not a huge deal there. I should have added a different file. But anyway, if we put hello, hello world here and we make a new branch, you'll see that I also can't commit to master because it is a protected branch. And this is another side effect of making these required checks here. Um, so if you do commit changes here and then we create this pull request, You'll see down here that it has specified that these two checks are required for this branch to be merged. And this, you know, makes sure that things are all green before you would actually merge a pull request. Um, you can also see these, for example, on, uh, we use this in PyTest to, to say which checks are required and not. So you can see, we look at this pull request. Uh, you can see that all of these re checks are required. Um, Oh, it hasn't actually started this yet. Maybe I should have picked an older pull request. Yeah, this one, for example. Um, you'll see that these checks are all required. There are some optionals that we don't, you know, aren't aren't blocking at the moment. So for instance, if Windows Python 3.10 is failing, we'll skip that. And that's because 3.10 isn't out yet. Um, we'll also skip, you know, CodeCov. And um, this one is optional because we have made this one our canonical way to do linting. Um, but yeah, you can configure which ones are and aren't. So I'm going to show you how to set this up on a repository. And uh, we're also going to close this pull request and delete this branch because we don't actually want to merge that. But I showed you what it would look like if it were green. Uh, but anyway, let's go to pre-commit. And we're going to temporarily set this up. I actually don't use this very often unless I'm likely to make a mistake. Um, so your mileage may vary. And you may decide or not decide to, to set up this, this feature. Uh, but you'll go into the settings tab of your repository. You'll go to branches. This is where we are going to add a branch protection rule. And this is how these are configured. So we'll add a rule. Uh, the branch protection rule takes a pattern for your branches. I believe this is a regular expression, although we're just using a single, uh, a single branch name for this. So it's only going to apply to one branch. It may also be a glob. I'm not really sure. Um, and then there's a whole bunch of options for protecting a branch. But what we're going to be using is requiring a particular status check. And um, I usually don't check this button because I find it really, really annoying. This forces you to merge master whenever master changes or merge your default branch whenever your default branch changes. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I find that that's not super useful. Uh, but what you can do here is you can search for the particular um, check that you want. So in this case, and they'll, they'll be listed by name here. Uh, so in this case, I want to use the pre-commit CI PR check. That's the linting check that I have. And I also want to include pre-commit.pre-commit. This is the test run of mine. Um, another setting that you'll want to probably check is this include administrators option here. Uh, this makes it so that even if you're an admin on the repository, it will still enforce this branch protection. You can, of course, turn this off in emergency situations where you would want to you know, bypass your, your branch protection, but I find that this prevents more mistakes than it does. And actually, there's a little bit of history about this. I believe this option was originally added because uh, <laughs> my team complained about it a lot at Lyft, and so GitHub added this feature. Uh, because we kept having administrators accidentally force pushing history. And so this will this will ensure that this check is still on. Um, yeah, and you can also uh, you know, check these boxes to prevent force pushes or prevent uh, deletions as well. Uh, and then after that, you just click Create. 
and it'll ask you for your password, which I can grab from my password manager. And uh, that will set up the branch protection rule here. And you can see here, you can see it here. Uh, you can also delete this if you no longer want it. Um, so you can go to delete, but you can see now if I go to those pull requests, they will have you know, this required uh, thing next to it. And it'll also say that you cannot merge it without those required checks passing. Um, and if you don't check that administrator box, you can override it here, but yeah, anyway. I don't want this rule, so I'm going to delete it, and that's how you undo it. Anyway, that's how you set up protection rules for branches on GitHub. Hopefully this was useful. If there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.